and I have fellow team members who have trained and uh, learned to operate and maintain this loop. Uh, in the back we have Harry Butler and we have a pair of marks. We simply call them Mark 1 and Mark 2. <laughs> we spent three weeks with Mr. Takeuchi from uh, Japan who is the uh, world expert on this loop and uh, enjoyed three weeks of very intense training and uh, it, was, uh, it was very valuable for us. The G loom, of course, is uh, light years, uh, was light years ahead of its time. It's, uh, the technology in this was so advanced for the 1920s and 30s that uh, it is just incredible. And uh, I'd like to, to show you some of the parts. First of all, the shuttle, which is the, uh, the automatic change that made this loom revolutionary. The shuttle creates the weft part of the, the weave, W-E-F-T, and it travels right to left and left to right at 156 times a minute. When we start the loom, you'll notice it's just traveling as a blur, moving very quickly. The yarn coming toward you, toward the front, is called the warp yarn. It consists of 3,200 individual strands of yarn, and the machine is so advanced that uh, Okie Okies are built in. That's a fail-safe device that stops the machine if something is abnormal. We still use Okie Okies out in the plant, but we uh, now have the advantage of modern electronics, fiber optics, photo eyes, and so forth. Sakichi Toyota had to do this mechanically. When the a shuttle passes across, that's called one pick, and on each pick there is a spring-loaded pin that constantly checks the diameter of the bobbin. The bobbin inside the shuttle carries about seven minutes worth of yarn. Before this loop, uh, as Mr. Roy mentioned, one operator can only run three or four loops. After this, 30 or 40, so uh, much improvement in efficiency. This is the reed system that moves forward on each cycle to tighten the weave. And just behind it is the HELD, H-E-A-L-D, that consists of two curtains operating independently. The warp yarn passes through a loop in the uh, two rows of wires hanging from each HELD curtain. And that creates a shed for the shuttle to run through in one direction. Every other strand of yarn is up as the shuttle moves. When it returns, they reverse. Every other strand is down. So you have the over-under weave effect. You'll see when the loom operates, the scale curtains alternate. One up, one down, one up, one down. There are other fail-safes at the Pokeyokes I'd like to point out. One checks the weft yarn to make sure it's present. There is a fourth that moves every time the reed moves forward and is checking for this weft yarn. If it's not present, there is a latch, the machine automatically stops. That's the control lever. Behind the hell system are four rows of stainless steel droppers. Again, that is to uh, stop the machine if something's abnormal. If only one of those 3,200 strands of yarn should break, those strips will fall, and it gets a very sensitive rod that triggers leakage and again stops the machine. So, uh, very, very, very efficient. The machine, of course, is powered. Everything on the machine is powered by one source. Currently, we have an electric motor with a modern control box that allows us to meet safety standards today and lock out the power. Originally, the loom was powered via a belt driven uh, driving the main pulley going overhead in the mill to a large shaft powered by a single source, either steam or water, and many looms could be lined up in a row to make that happen. The uh, shuttle itself is very innovative in the way that it's loaded. Mr. Toyota figured out a means of improving the, uh, the shuttle loading. Originally, the operator would hold the shuttle in one hand, the yarn in the other, and 
The object is to get the yarn out of this hole. Standard practice in the 1920s was to use one of two methods. Hold a fork in your teeth and pull the yarn out, or many operators chose to simply place their mouth on the shuttle and draw the yarn out. Uh, Maybe okay for first shift, not so good for second shift. So Sakichi figured out if he used a groove system and an opposing hole at the right angle and used recoil, he could snap the yarn and make it appear before your very eyes on the other side. So uh, it saved a lot of health issues, was much faster than the uh, old method. The operator could come to the trough where the empty shuttles are kicked out and pick up the empty shuttle, load them just like I did with the machine running, drop the shuttle in the in shuttle chamber, and the magazine and wrap around the pin and you're good to go. This 10 shuttle magazine uh, has a system, a slide system that allows the bottom shuttle to kick in when the empty shuttle is kicked out and the machine never misses a beat and there is no flaw in the material. That eliminates muna or waste in Japanese. Before that was uh, available, the machine would continue to run and Without yarn, we have a run similar to what we see in nylon today. So very, very important. When the shuttle, uh, when the bobbin in the shuttle reaches a point where that spring-loaded pin detects this groove, that tells the machine that the shuttle is near empty, and that's what triggers it to kick out. I'd like to uh, run the machine for you. I do ask that no one step beyond the uh, plexi because uh, uh, safety does insist that everyone stay around the front. It will be a little noisy, I'll warn you, but uh, we won't run it too long. Uh, please watch these areas. You'll see the shuttle has a blur here, a blur here. You'll see the fork operating, checking for the wet yard. You'll see the spring loaded rod checking for the diameter of the bottle. The reed will move forward and the L system will work up and down. And with any luck, we should see a shuttle change as well. I'd also like to, uh, in just a few minutes, demonstrate how the, uh, the droppers work on the back. So we can show you uh, the Pokeoke and how it operates. All right, if you're ready, we will start it up. So uh, 
It's rather difficult to learn to tie. Mr. Takeuchi, our instructor, uh, used uh, repetition, repetition to teach us. We tied many, many, many hundreds of knots, right guys? Until we were fairly good at it, and he was certain that uh, we would be able to, to handle yarn breakage, and it's been very good training. We uh, thank you for your time, and uh, we're very happy to be able to share this with you. Thanks, Larry. Yeah, I'm on the phone now. Okay. Well, thank you, Larry. Uh, and I really appreciate everyone taking time to be here with us today. My name is Norm Buffuno, and I'm the president of Team MI. We are certainly very honored and very excited to have this important part of Toyota history right here in southwestern Indiana. Many people would not expect to see a loom right here. They expect to see an automobile. But the principles that our founding father established in the spirit of challenge and the spirit of innovation to bring a machine like this into the marketplace that eventually sell the patent rights that form the company that we know today as Toyota is very exciting. We have an opportunity to use this type of equipment to teach our team members these fundamental aspects of our business. What you saw a minute ago with Larry the demonstrating of one piece of yarn that would fail. If there was no detection of a failed piece of yarn, basically the entire canvas would be ruined until somebody noticed there would be a streak of a defective yarn missing. And we wanted to, Sakichi Toyota wanted to find out, is there a way to detect that automatically? We use that same type of detection in building every one of our vehicles. If there's a problem, our line stops. We address it, resolve it, and move forward. And so these kind of very basic aspects and very fundamental aspects to our business are very transferable. I would also like to thank both Larry for an explanation today, for all of our uh, maintenance team for the great job of getting the machine up and going and going through your extensive training, and also for Kaz Oe on the perspective and the history of this important machine and what it means to us. We're certainly very, very honored. The last comment that I'll make is on a completely different subject. I would also, since all of you are here today, like to take a minute to thank all of our customers because it means a lot to us. People that are buying Highlanders, people that are buying Siennas. And if July is any indication of what they think of our products, we had an outstanding one of uh, year-over-year improvements, but the Highlander almost 28%. Sienna up again year-over-year. Year. But what it means to us is the confidence and the safety and the reliability and dependability of our products. But also what it does is it works magically in the plant because we are hiring people. This month, we brought on 30 new team members as part of our organization. We're very proud of that. Since June, when we went back to straight time capacity, we have brought on another 100 very workforce team members here as part of our team. But none of that happens without great sales from customers. So I'd like to take this time to thank all of them on behalf of everyone here at Team of Mind. And now what I'd like to do is open up for any questions you might have about anything you saw or anything else in our visitor center and uh, we'd also like to give you an opportunity to walk around if you had any specific questions with our team members from those areas to ask answer any questions uh, for you as well so does anybody have any questions and Mark, if you want to show the piece of fabric if you want to show them what it actually looks like feels like okay uh, Larry, I'll get that This is 100% cotton and 460 grid count, so I'm told it's pretty good stuff. It can be used as is or dyed. And uh, if you would like to check it out, it's a great count.